Happy Tuesday Eve. It's Shannon Wilkie, education advocate and owner of the Shine Advocacy Group. Tonight we're going to talk about 504s. What a 504 plan is, how you can obtain one for your student, and what it is not. So a 504 plan is a formal document that schools must follow indicating how they're going to accommodate the disability and provide equal access to the general education curriculum for your student. Section 504 stems from the Rehab Act. It's basically a civil rights law that prevents discrimination for students living with disabilities. So a few points. A 504 plan includes accommodations that are gonna include varieties of ways to instruct or change the school environment. It is not specialized education. It is not going to teach your child differently. Instead, accommodations attempt to level the playing field but your child's still gonna be expected to learn the same information. Um, accommodations can be discussed and considered if they're deemed reasonable. So if they address a manifestation of the student's disability, they can be discussed. There's not just a drop down menu of accommodations that you have to pick from. It should be anything that may help your student have access to the general education curriculum. So on a written 504 plan, you're gonna see the area of need, then the accommodation, then the person responsible for that. Um, it's usually a general education teacher. So the basics of the law is according to the Department of Ed, a child with a disability is defined as a person who has an impairment, physical or mental, that substantially limits a major life activity. So when we're looking at ADHD, it's concentrating, thinking, learning, those are major life activities. If we're looking at anything physical, it could ma it, the major life activity could be walking, could be reading, it could be anything at all, um, getting dressed. So those are some reasons that a child may qualify for a 504. The second kind of prong is, does the student have record of the impairment or is regarded as having the impairment? So what that means is if your student has, um, if they're in a wheelchair, you can, tell that the student has an impairment or if they're struggling greatly at school with reading, it's known that the student has an impairment. The student does not need to have a medical record of the impairment, which is often a misconception in the field. But if you do, the e most clients have a diagnosis for, let's say, disability um, in ADHD or anxiety or they have a reading impairment. If you already have that record, just provide it to the school, it will streamline the process, but the student can be regarded as such if, if need be. So for the process to go, you you would need to make sure that the to qualify it's that it's going to be um, impairing something at school. Sorry, I'm tired, that got, I got a little tongue tied there. Um, and then the 504 meeting is held to determine eligibility, set up accommodations, and it's pretty easy breezy. And then you're gonna have a 504 meeting annually to discuss and update accommodations. Parents are a really important part of the team. You can propose accommodations at any time. Um, you do not need to wait to the annual year mark. I hope that helps. And that's the 504 in a nutshell.